Hello, I'm V and welcome back to The Wanderlust Reader. And today I'm going to be giving some recommendations for books that feature mental health themes slash characters with mental health issues. A bit similar to what I said in my LGBTQ plus recommendations, which I will link, leave linked above. Mental health is one of those things that has only really recently started being talked about, started to lose a lot of the stigma that it had, I mean unfortunately it still does have a bit of a stigma, but it's filtering through into books and people are being more open about it and people are talking about it and I think the more books that are published about it encourages people to talk about it more. Along with re making sure you're reading books by people of colour and diverse ethnicities and diverse sexualities, gender experiences, etc. Reading books about people with diverse mental health or neurodiversity I think is an important thing to make sure you're doing enough of because it gives you in a sense of empathy and it helps you to understand what someone else might be going through behind closed doors which is never a bad thing. So the first one that I will recommend is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. This has been out, in fact all of these have been out for quite a few years now. This is the most realistic depiction that I have ever read of somebody with an anxiety-based condition. It portrays OCD and it follows a girl called Aza Holmes who suffers from OCD as she navigates daily existence within the ever-tightening spiral of her own thoughts. So obviously all of these books come with trigger warnings for the things that they discuss. So this one is OCD and it does apply I think to other anxiety-based conditions because reading this really reinforced this theory, if you can call it that, that I have that so many mental health conditions are anxiety-based. Their, their intense fear. Sometimes it's fear of different things, but they are generally an intense fear of something. And, and the, the mental health condition is in how we react to that fear or what that fear is of, or a combination of the both. Aza does have the traditional, not traditional, not traditional, stereotypical, common, commonly, what's, what's most like commonly thought of when you talk about OCD. And that is a fear of contamination, a fear of germs, a fear of getting ill and dying from said illness. It is realistic and it's based in John Green's own experiences, which is why it's, I think, it's so, so good. I have heard people had to stop reading it because it was just too triggering, which I can totally understand. The second book is also a depiction of OCD and that is Am I Normal Yet? by Holly Bourne. I just picked this randomly up out of a charity shop one day, thought it looked interesting. It's less vivid than Turtles All The Way Down. It follows a girl called Evie who just wants to be normal. She's just come off her meds and she's starting at a new college where no one knows her as the girl who went crazy. Her friends don't know about her illness, but when she falls in love, how will she keep her secret? It's kind of the premise and it is really good. And I think, especially if you are that age of sort of 17, 16, 17, 18, where you get college, university, um, school even, and you are dealing with mental illness or anything that sort of makes you a bit different and you feel like well you can't you can't tell people because then they'll see you as some sort of weird person and won't want won't want anything to do with you and you're dealing with all that teenage pressure and on top of that you've got an issue that not everybody has to deal with this one is sort of more a bit more light-hearted than turtles all the way down um but it still does deal with it really sensitively and i totally empathized with evie and I, I really enjoyed reading it. It is part of a series. I haven't read, I haven't read the series. I think it's The Spinsters Club. I think it's called The Spinsters Club, something like that, but I haven't read the rest of the series. I just really enjoyed this book and I'm, I'm, I may read them one day, but I'm not sure. But I still recommend, highly recommend this book, especially for younger readers. The next one is more of an adult recommendation and that is The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. This is the first book that I read that really featured a character with mental health issues that really really deals with that. It centres on a character called Matthew. Um, his brother died when they were children and he blames himself and that manifests in his schizophrenia. The story follows him as he works out what really happened the night his brother died and works through finding stability in his mental health. It's a slow story and it's it's quite a difficult read in places but it does give a good insight into schizophrenia um, Nathan Filer was a mental health nurse before he became an author. So whereas he's obviously not writing from personal experience, he's as close to it as is possible to get without actually 
having it. I didn't know a lot about schizophrenia before reading this and I still feel like I don't know enough about schizophrenia. So it is something, I think if you're looking to gain an insight into it, this is a really good read. Book number four is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Now I'm not the, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this book. I don't like the fan fiction element of it. The story basically centres on Kath who writes fan fiction, um, Harry Potter based fan fiction and she's heading to college for the first time and she's relied on her twin Ren throughout their childhood but now Ren wants her independence and Kath has to learn how to function without her. Kath is an introvert and the way she is throughout most of the book is classic social anxiety. I saw a lot of myself in her. Before I read this book I honestly thought I was the only one who had these neuroses um, about social situations and things like that. Now Rainbow Rowell as an author I believe has some baggage um, and obviously the Harry Potter stuff. If you have an issue with Harry Potter, obviously ignore everything I'm saying. Honestly, I skipped over most of the fan fiction in this book because I'm not interested in that sort of thing. The fan fiction is is a um, queer take on Harry Potter. It's making a fetish out of male male romance, which I'm not not interested in. But I would recommend it for anyone who's struggling with social anxiety and just wants to feel less alone because that's what this book does. Honestly, um, I didn't buy this and I probably won't just borrow it from the library. The last one is The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily X. Arpan, and if I could live inside this story, I would. This is not a short book. I read this in like two days because I could not put it down. I borrowed it from the library. It's 2019, summer of 2019. The minute I finished it, I ordered a copy from Waterstones. I was just like, I have to have a copy of this book end of. So this is a book about grief and the after effects of suicide and depression on those left behind. So Lee is half Asian, half white, and after her mother's death she travels to Taiwan to meet her maternal grandparents for the first time. She's determined to find her mother who she believes has become a red bird. It's incredibly sad but it has that sad hopefulness to it that I'm sure there's probably a descriptive word for but I, I really love it. It, her mother does die by suicide. It, that's not depicted in the book. It's about Lee. It's about living after something like that has happened and about carrying on. I class it as magical realism, but I know some people have issues with um, books from other cultures being classed as magical realism. So either do or don't. It is beautifully written and deals with grief in an absolutely beautiful way. It, it takes something that is heart-wrenching and sad and, and soul-destroying and just gives some grace and some beauty to what's left behind. I think that this could be an incredibly comforting book if you are struggling with grief, especially if you're a young person. So that is it. That is all of the books that I currently would recommend that I have read. Um, I'm sure there are many, many more out there that I will read and I'll probably be able to expand on this list. Um, if you know of any amazing books with mental health representation, mental health themes, characters with mental health issues, drop them in the comments below. Um, like if you liked, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time with another video.